transmedia, it's about storytelling, and storytelling is based upon very old tradition. W.H. Auden, he has gone so far as so he actually says that storytelling is a way of defining us as humans, because we are very much past and future, while animals are much more here and now. For me, transmedia is both. It's definitely about past and future, but it's all about here and now. I don't know if you have heard it, the, the news about carrots, but the amount of sold carrots in Europe has been going down for years. And uh, many has there been ideas about how to bring them up again, until one came up with the, the, the brilliant idea of let's redesign carrots. And suddenly you have a new design, meeting a new demand, but it's still a carrot. The oral tradition, the tradition of telling stories around the campfire, is almost as old as the human, I guess. And while listening in on a story, you are, as an audience, invited to bring the story back home to you. You can make it a local flavor of it. You can add a character. That's an old tradition. And then came publishing along. And by publishing, we also got a very, very uh, severe respect of the story. It was written. And written stories, then you're not allowed to bring in on your own character, make a lo local flavor anymore. And online gaming has changed that. Once again, the audience are invited to act and react to the stories, bring in their own characters, make the local flavor talk a lot about, about audience. Here is a relationship that we have discovered is pretty fairly common, that out of a million of, of traditional broadcast audience sitting in the sofa, we get these levels. And I say that, that the bottom level and the top level is quite easy to get. The difficult part is to get the one in between, uh, to make the audience lean forward uh, to be activated, take the first step, and it's all about bringing down the threshold. Well, in Sweden, a lot of people are disappearing. Actually, 20,000 since 1965. Uh, that is a fact. What if those people disappearing are living in a sub-society? in another universe besides us. Maybe some of you are here today, I don't know. Anyway, um, we, we, we took that fact and turned it into a fiction in, in such a way that we told the story about Marika. Marika disappears on a wedding night and we made a participation drama. A month before, or two weeks before premiering the first episode, Marika's best friend, Jana, came forward. She accused SVT of telling a lie. This, this story was a totally false story, and it was actually based upon a real girl disappeared. SVT, of course, has to publicly deal with those accusations. Boy, did we think we were smart, not telling the audience that it was fiction. We actually cheated them into that this was real. Uh, and instead of having uh, a game and uh, a big enthusiastic, enthusiastic uh, audience uh, being engaged in the story, we got to deal with a lot of other problems. When I was a boy, playing in Indian and Cowboys, it was totally clear for me that I were attending a game, but while in, it was real. So don't forget that when inviting, um, marketing, resources for marketing seems to be zero, uh, all gone when, when it's time for, for premiering. So it was also the case with Marika. We, uh, we were premiering in, in September, but during that summer we took this Jana character and she went around in Sweden during the summer to different youth festivals, music festivals. I think we visited more than 10 of them. And she had, uh, she put up a tent, she was looking for Marika, and she wanted help. Uh, and she had brought this flag, 
black and white flag waving at all these different concerts, and she was always alone. And then maybe at the eighth or ninth festival, this happened. Suddenly, it was two flags. Suddenly, we were starting to build the ambassador, the group of people that will actually be co-creators when building the story. Uh, finally, I would like to say something about creativity and the need and importance of changing perspective. They have been asking people, what would you do if you were offered a third eye? Where would you place it? Well, the most common answer is in the neck. Putting the same question to children, you get another answer, another answer on the finger, which means, of course, easy to look over your neck, behind you, but also around the corner, under, or over. Thank you.